welcome back my gardening friends it's the 9th of june and it looks like we're going to have a very hot weekend so what have i been uh, sowing and planting uh, in june so i've started to plant up uh, the uh, the bean beds but because they're so wide i was going to put these pallet collars uh, the other way but this seemed uh, the best option so it's given me a chance to uh, plant uh, um, direct sow some more pongos then we've got the uh, sparkler three from the save seed and as you can see there they're all coming up uh, these are mulched with the uh, cocoa koi we put in some fire storm our save seed from 2019 and we put some mint branches across the top hopefully to uh, disguise uh, the smell of the bean uh, to the mice and then on the opposite side we've got some more pongos uh, save seed from 2022 and then sparkler three and some more save seed from 2019 and then uh, some of the firestorm that we uh, saved from 2020 just trying the seeds out uh, they either grow or, or they don't but you can see there uh, in the middle the uh, sparkler three are growing and uh, i don't think they're the pongos but the birds have been in here so i'm not sure what's that it's probably a weed oh hang on oh <laughs> it's an oak tree it's an acorn uh, what they do the uh, the mice uh, bury the acorns in the uh, cocoa koi bags that we find if they've been dumped there for long enough and on the same day we uh, we continued uh, the sewing um, are these the same uh, oh cherry bell save seed uh, on the uh, the right hand side there but the mulching does help uh, retain the moisture the ground is really drying out now this has had no no water but as you can see as we go down it's uh, it's quite moist actually uh, that's the good thing about no dig gardening if you don't till the soil you won't lose any uh, moisture these are the ones that we sowed uh, <clears throat> in uh, the modules and then uh, we planted uh, the rest of the Pablo F1 up to there and then uh, the Sabutio F1 and uh, most of it uh, is all coming up I planted more seed than uh, in each station than required but three or four in each station will give me some nice small beets uh, for pickling uh, we prefer the smaller beets so he's cutting them in half. Now all this sweet corn was planted or sown at the same time, but because I held them back by leaving them in the uh, cell trays, look at the difference. And uh, I've used the lampshades to give support and hopefully to stop the uh, rats getting to them this year. And if they do start to, then I will take out the uh, these corner ones where these posts are. I should have just left them uh, out altogether. But never mind, we'll, we'll wait and see. And we planted these, uh, I think it was in May. And then we've, uh, sorry, sown those in May. Uh, these uh, have been done um, in the last uh, five days, I think. I haven't put the greenhouses on because I think they'll germinate all right, but it's just keeping uh, keeping the moisture in. But you could probably see the difference um, uh, it does make having the bottles on top. You can see all the condensation, and uh, they're germinating uh, uh, nicely. If it's a mistake, it's a mistake by not uh, using the bottles. But of course, time has not been on my side this year again. I'm glad I found time to put these uh, recycled uh, strops uh, to good use. At least I can walk down here now without uh, any trouble because they normally just flop over, especially in this wind. The uh, 
nets have blew off. I have to be careful because the pigeons will have a field day. Uh, these are the uh, Crispus F1 Brussels and I must say they do look uh, fine specimens. Now the idea of again these uh, lamp old street lamps is again to give the brassicas a little bit of support and all I do is uh, water down the sides and uh, all it needs is a quick splash because uh, they do retain the moisture and of course uh, we put the cocoa koi right down to uh, stop the weeds how embarrassing but look at that pull straight out uh, underway so that's the crispus these are the uh, red bull a little tinge on them again looking uh, fine specimens green magic they do look green and healthy didn't pull that by the root there we go good day um, so the green magic and then uh, we've got the uh, calibos as you can see there's not many weeds about again no dig weeds do pull out a lot easier let's have a look at the opposite bed which had the compost bin uh, temporary compost bins on so these are the uh, claret sprouting broccoli uh, we don't expect these to be too far ahead no rush for these we won't be harvesting these till uh, february or march of next year so we've left those uh, at this end uh, we've got um, a red cabbage here a mana uh, from Joan uh, I, I can't remember what her YouTube channel was but she sent them from I think it was the Netherlands uh, see how that gets on obviously it's way behind on my other mana red cabbages move on to the Calabrese Ironman uh, keeping them away from the uh, the butterflies and uh, everything else using the uh, Envirometh uh, uh, does help. Little markers there, little arrows, helps uh, my brain understand. And then we've got some more of the uh, Calabos. Use these over two beds. Looking very nice as well. Jerusalem artichokes they're using I'm using those to hold the nets down we've got one there look and uh, another one there in the middle of the screen another random one there it won't be long before these seed, seed zeds are ready I shall harvest those and uh, I shall grow my own onions from seed next year if I can get enough seed and uh, this weather so unpredictable cold at night really hot during the day hasn't done anything uh, any good well some things do better than others I'm continuously harvesting uh, any salad crops that uh, I've got these are my older uh, square foot uh, gardening beds all had super soil on them I'm going to be reapplying the super soil very soon and uh, to be the beet leaf mine I've just been taking the, the infected leaves off and uh, uh, getting rid of them because uh, you don't want to chew on a grub unnecessarily it's a little bit cruel the black flies got to uh, my uh, beans the crimson ones so we took the tops out and now I'm being diligent in watching for extra black fly they tend to go at the base of the uh, the flowers so hopefully we can keep on top of that now every time I see them I'll just cut them off about cut six inches off and uh, hopefully we'll get some beans this year struggled last year the green and uh, yellow courgettes now have been uncovered. I took the uh, old street lamps off them. And, uh, one plant of each is more than enough, but I've still got some spares just in case. And I can always keep them in the pots, hold them back, and then it can give us a, 
even though I've sowed them at the same time, you can get a successional crop by leaving them in the pots and restricting the growth. I am the parsnip king. Harvesting uh, radishes now. And Val's pongo beans uh, look a lot lusher than last year. I have been uh, looking after all my crops this time. I may have not planted stuff, I might miss missed stuff, but the stuff that's in the ground uh, I'm uh, looking after. Here's some of the potatoes that we revealed uh, in January and uh, we've got uh, potatoes there, these are the kestrel. So we harvested the potatoes January, February time. Uh, the ones with the best chits on because they start regrowing and I planted them and then we might get some nice early crops most of the silver skins are doing good the odd one is curling up on me got several, don't know whether that's uh, an infection or just uh, they're fed up well, there's a little grub in there, we don't know, but I'm happy with those. Should get enough for doing a few jars of pickles from those. More runner beans to plant out, again, holding them back. Now, you might say, oh, mine are halfway up the sticks. Yes, but your, your flowers probably drop off without um, actually getting pollinated. When put mine in at this stage, when they do grow, I'll get beans off the first flowers. If not, you can spray them with a fine mist to uh, encourage them to uh, set. So the gourmet shallots we got for 34 pence uh, for 12 sets. So I bought three bags, just, just under a pound. And they're sprouting now, whether they'll do any good or not. But it's got to be better than these. Never mind, he says. Here's some of my spares. Uh, as we lift the elephant garlic etc we've got bed spare we can uh, get some of these melons in not hurting in there they're not pot bound do need to get the spring uh, onions out though first time i've grown them properly and they're still in the cells come on get a grip a little bit of aphid damage on these carrots but they're coming along nicely now when I do sow them, I do water them at the top, but once that taproot gets down to where the wicking system is, where it's drawing water from the barrels, they seem to be doing all right. I haven't watered those, they look lush enough. So it's definitely working. Really pleased I set this system up. And these are just old water storage tanks that you get in the lofts. And when I cut them down, I left those braces in. And uh, as you can may see, it's a good job I did. So we'll have a proper look in the uh, polytunnel today. Lots of rubbish and debris about. So we've got a nice uh, Shirley tomato there. Uh, we've got uh, a sun gold there. And uh, it won't be long before we're having to tie some of these up. Just taking out the, uh, the side shoots. Uh, there's nothing wrong uh, with trying to uh, take a cutting from those. Popping them in a bit of water or some compost. These are some of the tomatoes that I had sent me. Somebody gave me, Alan from the Dawn Chorus Plot, sent me a load and load of seeds. And I'm eventually getting through them all, plant them, and uh, well, so I'll chip them and see if they grow. Uh, it's down to half again. Well moist. Uh, really well worth the money if you have to buy them, but of course these were destined for a skip. Again, we're using the old street lamps. Again, it's uh, for moisture retention. It helps with slugs. And uh, all I do is pour water down the side and it holds the moisture. Very rarely watering at the moment. If they start to get lip, go limp, you know you haven't given them enough water. If they curl up, the leaves curl up at the ends, you're over watering. Let the plants take as much water as they need. Again, I sowed lots and lots of tomatoes. You can tell that looks, the tomato is related to the potato family with that one. And we've got the cucumbers and we've got the wire mesh there. Uh, at, 
where we've planted uh, a row of uh, cucumbers etc now in there I've got a pot so when I water down the sides the water never gets to the stems so this year he says until he gets around the other side I've had no stem rot you've got to keep the water away from the stems you either water from the bottom using the tubes or you do like the halo method there and uh, I've got a little cucumber formed on the telepathy in the, the greenhouse on pot one. Orange banana, I really like that uh, one. But when you're pottering about like I am today, doing nothing, it's too warm. Just keep uh, taking uh, the side shoots out. Uh, these pallet collars uh, I had give me. They're only small, but bar oh, gum, they're ideal in here. Just enough room to walk through. Unless you've got a massive Kurobi uh, growing. Um, I hope you can sort of get the idea of that. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's massive. These do get to a really big size, and uh, I may not even be able, the leaves may end up touching the edge of the polytunnel. But it's growing well in the tunnel. And there's one of the uh, giant swedes now the swedes will grow absolutely massive but if you get rain on them they go rotten so i'm hoping that the is it one or two i've got in here i think it may be just the one but uh, hopefully i'll have something decent to take to Malvern. all these are uh, watered using the uh, the pipes so that uh, Gladiator F1. I'm not using any any particular sort of giant. Just going to grow the parsnip like I normally do, but you feed it with manure and everything else, and it should throw out all the legs. Running down this side, uh, we've used the uh, new beds. I'll think of them in a minute, but anyway, you know. Uh, uh, they have been sponsored. Uh, I've had some radish black Spanish round and uh, they're coming on along nicely so the successional sowing I'm doing well. Uh, Bill and Bowles melon at Minnesota. It's just started to uh, grow a bit uh, longer so we've got two there and then we've got a melon sugar baby and they'll climb up that uh, little bit of trellis in. This pepper from work, we had um, a vegetable box. It was a massive pepper, so I thought I'll take that. It was a lovely pepper to eat and I saved all the seeds. So I'll continually try and grow them. Hopefully they'll uh, look good. So we've got some uh, ruby fresh baby chard uh, towards the left there. And then we've got some of that uh, lettuce uh, there. And then in this one we've got some uh, more Bill and Bell's uh, pongos. And they're, they're being very popular to grow. Could have done with Garum a little bit easy, uh, earlier. Another Emily F1. Uh, looking a little bit sadder than uh, the telepathy, but the telepathy is always good. They always grow well. And another crystal apple there. Pink. Pink, big cherry. Might have got that wrong way round, but uh, and uh, Jason and Colleen's uh, Marboni uh, doing really well. Leaves on that are just curling in a little bit, so I'll restrict the watering on that one. And even though we've mulched up here, still getting a few weeds coming through. But they, uh, if you pull them out early, and oh, this is I'll, I'll pull them out at this stage especially when it's hot outside. It doesn't take long to clear the bed. Drought management, well I've got plenty of water. There's 2,000 litres there, another 1,000 plus litres there, uh, four barrels under there, and another 2,000 litres here, another 500 litres under there, and then there's three barrels there that have got taps on which I'll just open them up 
<laughs> they're buried in everything else at the moment but the water's there it stays nice and fresh if you keep the lids on uh, all these barrels are worth about 6,800 litres and I'm that far down so I would imagine there's still 4,000 plus litres here those are still full so these two barrels including two barrels behind uh, the door I built the last uh, raised bed so uh, that will be going here somewhere uh, this may be the final year of this bed here I'm, what I'm going to do is have uh, pallet collars all the way up there probably not yet so I might end up leaving this because I can't afford um, to create myself too much work where I can't um, keep on top of things and uh, you, like everyone says we must uh, uh, enjoy uh, our growing spaces two dead uh, giant carrots from there but we've got the moule growing really well at uh, home I've pulled out all the tulips out of the other bed and uh, netting up has done a real good job and I have put some slug pellets down the only reason I've put the slug pellets down in here because the birds can't get to them uh, because slugs uh, do tend to get inside and uh, they're a bit slimy when you uh, chew into one just draping a bit of netting over has stopped the birds this year gravity wick guttering system that's all the water I've used in a month a little valve in there and uh, everything seems uh, quite happy this is uh, one that I bought I didn't have uh, very good germination and there's the uh, telepathy and there's my first little cucumber now I'll probably let that get twice as big and that'll go straight in my lunchbox hole you can't beat fresh cucumbers and a tomato there from uh, Jason and Colleen from Clive's Conundrum Garden try and spread my plants about mix and match because if you have an uh, infestation or blight in one area, you've got other plants elsewhere. It doesn't take long for the comfrey to grow back. I'll cut that back from there. It's already started to flower, so I can now cut this down. Uh, it's alive uh, with uh, bees and uh, they can move on to the next one. As you can see, it's all over the place. And uh, just sitting here watching them go from flower to flower so relaxing so normally I'd use my comfrey pipe but uh, it's a bigger version everything gets thrown in here and as you can see now uh, we've got the juices uh, are flowing so we just need to keep it topped up and built up and then anything that sediment uh, old leaves uh, can be put in the compost bin when we're finished I only take three harvests and then we let it grow uh, so that it can put energy back into its uh, crown roots etc I must say my condors are growing really well uh, this year and uh, it would be nice to get a big potato they're getting watered every day feed every other always nice to see what's new in our growing spaces all self-seeded some poppies ferns bought those from home and then we've got some succulents in those little containers that we uh, salvaged from outside somebody's house the same as the uh, little waterfall that uh, I haven't uh, really done much with nice little area this is it's been that warm, the water's uh, completely dried out. There's the June drop, and uh, it's not leaving me many pairs on, but uh, each one will be special. That's one of the uh, Swedes, and uh, it's quite big, but it will get, uh, if we get any rain, it could end up going rotten. Yum, yum, it won't be long. I think this is the best, this. Uh, blackberry's bin 
I don't know the varieties, a lot of the plants that I've got my lot of because uh, I've either had them given me or I've reused them uh, from uh, this plot uh, previously. Won't be long. If you've liked uh, the content, please give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Please leave me a comment. Put, give the comments a thumbs up if you think they warrant them. Join in with the comments. Talk about whatever you like. Ask whatever you like. And why not consider subscribing? Happy gardening to you all. Till next time, my friends. Try for now.